Hi there. All right. So this is part two of my I can't talk about this while I'm driving video about older Model S uh, major expensive repair issues. So uh, I keep saying Model S, but this also applies to the Model X in many cases. So it's that whole that whole chassis. They use the same batteries. They use a lot of the same drive units. Let's first of all, uh, the, the previous video was all about the batteries. This one's all about the drive unit. So we're talking about drive units from 2012 until I believe 2019 and only the large drive unit. So it looks sort of like this when it's in the car. You can see that. It's the big one in the back. So if you have a dual motor that is not a performance, this does not apply to you. But if you have a rear wheel drive Model S or a Model S or X long uh, performance, you have the large rear drive unit. And that is the one that has kind of the Achilles heel failure point, which is the seal between the inverter and the drive unit itself. So there's coolant that runs through this, through this motor. And if you look at in this picture, so the coolant circulates through the battery and comes, I forget which way it goes, but basically it goes through this whole thing and then back out the other side. It's sharing coolant with the battery pack. There's a seal there because the inverter side is full of all kinds of electronics. And it's supposed to keep that electron, all those electronics dry, and it doesn't. Uh, eventually, that seal fails. Most of these drive units have at some point been replaced by Tesla for a variety of reasons, including the milling sound. But at some point, the refurbished drive units used a single lip seal, whereas when they were built originally, they had a triple lip seal. Doesn't matter. They're all going to fail eventually. So... Uh, what happens when it fails? Well, you'll get an error and the car will stop moving and, and all those kind of things. First, let's get into the, the, the bottom line. Can you detect it before it fails? Yeah, you probably can. Uh, if you are somewhat handy, and you can go to the video that I have of the um, lower rear control arm replacement, and you'll see how to take off those shrouds and stuff underneath, you can eventually get up there on the driver's side, you'll find a speed sensor and there's videos on how to do this other people have made and you can pull that speed sensor off and look at it. And if it's wet inside, then that means you've got coolant where you don't want coolant and, and the clock is ticking. But what do you do then? Uh, if you want to have a third party fix the car, they still have to drop the drive unit in order to do that. This is not going to be a do it yourself project for most people because of the high voltage cables that are involved, the coolant lines that are involved, the weight of the drive unit, the height you have to get the car, there's just a lot of stuff there. I wouldn't even begin to think that I would attempt to uh, modify the drive unit. So let's say you take it to a shop. Well, now you have to pay somebody to do all of that stuff and to put it all back together. And, and every, by the time you do that, you're very close to the price of just having Tesla swap it out. Uh, in the past, this was a problem because the drive units would still fail because of this seal issue. However, let me go to my notes here. Let's see what they are costing now, just as a comparison. So if you had done this previously, you're looking at a refurbished drive unit that was somewhere in the $5,000 range for Tesla to do all the work. And if you did a, uh, a new build, it would probably be a couple thousand more than that. But... Uh, it's not super common to get new ones anymore. So what is the issue now? Well, the issue now is that you can get, uh, you can still get a refurbished drive unit for about that same price. But what you're looking for is, um, and third party companies started doing this first. So we'll give credit where credit is due. Third party companies did this first. Here's what the side of that drive unit would look like from factory is this. And then you can see this third party one has eliminated where that coolant goes and they've added this tube that kind of goes around it. And here you can kind of see how it goes around, right? I'm not vouching for that company. I, I don't know anything about that company, but I know that they're not local to me. And so for me to ship the car to them, to have them do it, to then send it back would cost way more than just going the one mile to the service center and getting a brand new drive unit or a refurbished one. So, what Tesla has done is they have basically adopted the same methodology as the third party companies and they are fixing the drive units uh, themselves with this workaround. And this is what you want. This is a new drive unit from Tesla and it's known as a revision U. And here is what the Tesla 
version of that fix looks like. And I'm going to show you right now, this is the part number that you want. Now these are available new and as refurbished large drive units. Both refurbished and new have the same uh, part number revision uh, or iteration and it's, it's that U, literally a U. And you may also see it identity. So there's the U, there's the part number in the U as a seal delete manifold. That's the one to get. All right. So if I go back to what do those cost? Because you're thinking, oh my gosh, it's going to cost way more because they redeveloped it. And I'm going to say that, no, it's actually the same price as the broken ones. All right. So you're kind of getting a view out my window there. But if you can look through the reflection, you'll see down here, that is a revision U drive unit. And there's your total cost. And here is the installed price down here, which is not focusing, but take my word for it, it's $7,213. That's with some suspension modifications and stuff that were done for this person at the same time. Uh, a new drive unit may be more than that. It's hard to say exactly, but I will say that if we look at the part price on the refurbished one, it's $5,200. And then I have a copy here of somebody else's invoice on a new one. And if I can get it to zoom in here, a new rear lower drive unit focus is $6,000. So it's in part cost, it's about $800 difference. Labor is going to be the same. And, you know, and again, it's that, it's that tube that bypasses the inverter and saves your inverter from getting fried. So um, this should be the very last drive unit you ever buy. If you don't have a revision U drive unit, you probably got one more to go. And that's why I recommend getting it from Tesla because, I mean, it's hard to beat that price. Again, if, you, if you're going to ship a car somewhere to have somebody modify a drive unit of, you know, that you have that has unknown condition versus getting a brand new one or a, a factory refurbished one from Tesla, this is one of those instances where, where Tesla, I think, is, is undercutting the third party by doing the same thing that third party companies had already done. So not particularly innovative in this scenario, but that's how it works. And Tesla will warranty these for four years, 50,000 miles, whereas your third party shop or your modified current drive unit, your warranty is probably not going to be that good. So um, you do get into the same scenario of if you pay for a brand new drive unit, the extra $800 or so, I can't imagine that the overall price of installing it is um, really any different because it's the same labor, whether it's new or refurbished. Uh, but if anything goes wrong with that and you have to replace it under warranty, Tesla is probably going to give you a refurbished unit. So you're kind of out the $800 and you're out the, um, the new, the, you know, now you have a refurbished unit anyway. And that's something I think that they're, they're probably going to get some pushback on, on the battery side first, and then maybe they'll change their policy. Uh, because I think their policy should be that if you pay for a new part and that new part fails under warranty, you should get a new part. If you pay for a refurbished part uh, as a paid repair, then getting a refurbished part is fair. But if you pay the extra for a new part, you should only get new parts as replacements. Um, that should be how out of warranty work is done. Just my opinion there. So um, those are the things to look for in the older cars. Uh, again, this does not affect long range all wheel drive cars, dual motor cars, because they use the same drive unit front and back. And those are a smaller drive unit and they're really good. They don't break, but this involves the performance model S and X and the rear wheel drive S going all the way back to 2012. All right. There's one other thing that I will talk about at another, another video. And it'll be the, I swear it'll be the last one I do in this dining room series. And that is what is the sweet spot for getting out of an older model S possibly X, although not so much. Uh, if the, the price of these repairs scares you and uh, yes, I've thought about it. No, I'm not quite ready to do it. So that's why I still have a almost two year out of warranty model S in the garage, but I have thought about it and I'll tell you what my thoughts are in the next one. All right. Thank you for watching. And sooner or later, we'll get back to these ones that are driving because they're, they're a whole lot easier for me to do too. All right.